In this video, we're going to work on naming alcohols, thiols, and ethers. And so what I'm going to do is do this through example. I think a good way to learn is to, for me to show you an example and give you the mental thought process of naming these molecules. So I've given you a molecule here. Um, what I want you to do is pause the video, try to name it on your own, and then come back and I'll go through step by step how to name a molecule like this. Okay, so hopefully you have a name written down. The first thing I do when naming an organic molecule is figure out what family it belongs to, whether that be an alkane, a carboxylic acid, an alcohol, an ether, a thiol, whatever. And in this one, because I see uh, this OH group here on the molecule, I realize that it's from the alcohol family, and therefore the name of this molecule will end in all, O-L. The next part is to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains that OH group. Um, and what I mean by that is the carbon chain, uh, the, the carbon that's attached to the OH directly, and that's the one I have underlined here, that one must be part of the longest chain because that's the one that's attached to the OH. And so I see, I think I see my longest continuous chain. Let me number those carbons. One, two, three, four, five and six. Um, and so there's the longest continuous chain. It's six carbons long. And what you want to do is also number the longest chain so that the carbon attached to the OH gets the lowest number possible. So just to make sure I've done this correctly, let me number from the other direction. And I'll, I'll color this in an orange color. Well, let me go and do something a little bit more drastically different so we can see those numbers, but I'll number the carbons from a different direction. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And notice with my green numbering, uh, the carbon will fall, the, o the, the carbon attached to the OH will fall on the third carbon. If I do the red numbering, it's on the fourth carbon. And so in this case, the direction that gives me the lowest number possible is the direction of the green numbering. And so I'm going to use that green numbering uh, to go ahead and name this molecule. So, um, using the green numbering, I see I have my alcohol group, and I, I'm going to identify the parent name first, and so the parent name is basically how many carbons are in the longest chain, and it's six carbons. So this makes this a hexane, or a hex, and to name an alcohol appropriately, we call it hexanol. Uh, we have to identify where the OH is, or on which carbon the OH is, and so in front of that, I'll put a 3, because we decided the green numbering was the way to number it, and so that's 3 hexanol. So there's the parent name. Now we need to add in the substituents and make sure we add that to the prefix of this name. So let's identify the, the, the um, substituents. And that's basically any group that's hanging off of that carbon, that six carbon chain we just numbered, uh, not including hydrogen. So I see a group right there that I just circled, uh, another one out there, and I see a chloro group right there. And I think I've got all the groups hanging off this chain. And so we have a chloro group, and we have a couple of methyl groups. And so um, in the naming of this, uh, we do it alphabetical. Um, the chloro is going to fall on the fifth carbon, and the methyls, there's two of them, so it's going to be a dimethyl. They fall, they're going to fall on the two and three carbons. And so now I just need to put them together in alphabetical order. The di, the D does not count in uh, alphabetical uh, organization of the prefix. So I'll be using the C in chloro and the M in methyl. Chloro comes before methyl, and so therefore the name of this molecule is going to be 5-chloro. And we have 2-3-dimethyl, 3-hexanol. Okay, so here's the next practice molecule. Again, uh, go ahead and pause the video, and then when you're done, and you think you have the name, go ahead and restart the video, and I'll go through the mental thought process to name this molecule. Okay, so again, um, when I start this off, I ask the same questions to myself every time, and the first question I always ask myself is, what family does this belong to? Um, this is an ether, um, because it has uh, the general structure R, O, 
R. Um, and what that means is R is just some sort of uh, carbon hydrogen or group attached to an oxygen. And on the other, the other bond to that same oxygen is another carbon hydrogen uh, group. And the two R's, one has a prime and one doesn't. And all that means is uh, those R's don't have to be the same. They can be different. And that's what we have in our case here. And I can actually uh, box in the areas and show you this. Um, right here is one of our R groups. And right here is the other R group. And then you can see the oxygen attached in the middle of them. And so this has the classic look of an ether. And so uh, this is an ether. And so the family name for ethers that we, when we write the name is just ether. And then all we have to do from here on out is go ahead and name the two groups attached um, to the oxygen individually. So on the left-hand side, it's a two-carbon uh, group, and so that therefore that's an ethyl group hanging on that side. And on the other side, we have a propyl group. And so at this point, we just now um, go ahead and write those in as the, as the prefix to this uh, ether name. And so we just do that alphabetically. So E comes before P, so we'll write the ethyl first. And so this is ethyl propyl ether. Okay, and here's a final example for you to um, attempt. Um, again, try to name the molecule as best you can, and then um, restart the video, and I will go through the process of naming this molecule. Okay, so again, I'll start out with the same question that I always do. I have to determine the family of this molecule. It looks an awfully much like an alkane, except we have one little difference, and that is right here. We see an ASH group, and that is indicative of a thiol. And so we have a thiol in, under, on our hands. I don't know if I have enough space to write the name. I may have to use multiple lines, but the family name's a thiol. And thiols and names end in the word thiol. I have trouble dotting that I, but that's a thiol. And now we need to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the thiol. Um, uh, many times, uh, so let me go ahead and start numbering this. Many times we sometimes forget that small detail of longest continuous carbon chain that contains the thiol, and we might get something like this. And that is the longest continuous carbon chain, I believe, in this molecule, is this one. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't contain the carbon that's attached to the SH, and I just underlined that carbon. So that carbon must be part of the longest continuous chain. And so therefore, um, the way we have it numbered is uh, incorrect. Um, and so here I have through carbon 6 and then carbon 7, 8, and 9. So there's the longest continuous carbon chain that includes the thiol group. Um, but we also want to get the thiol must have the lowest number possible. It must be numbered in a way that gives the sulfur hydryl group, the SH, the lowest number possible. And so I could attempt to number it the other way, and I'm doing that in green. And if I have my numbering right, and I think I do, you can see that by the red numbering, uh, the sulfur hydro group would be on carbon 7. By the green numbering, it would be on carbon 3. And so therefore, the green numbering is the numbering I'm going to go with. And so uh, 9... Um, carbons long uh, is nonane, and so this is a nonane thiol, and the thiol is on group or on carbon 3. So this is 3, uh, nonane thiol um, is, the, is the name of that part of the molecule. And now the rest, um, we got a name as substituents, would be a prefix to this uh, structure. And so 
Um, everything's named so far except for this big old group up here on the fourth carbon. And that big old group is a butyl group. And so uh, that's going to be 4-butyl. And I don't see any other substituents on this molecule. And so therefore, uh, it will be 4-butyl-3-nonane-thiol.